How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this logo animation. We're gonna be using geometry nodes and it's really, really simple to build. First, we're gonna take the logo and distribute some points on it. Then we're gonna take that and make it a little bit more 3D in some Z space. Then we can displace it using a noise texture. After that, we're gonna distribute some spheres and some flat planes so that we can get a little bit of glitter and brightness and some color distribution in this animation. After that, it's just gonna come down to lighting, animation, and we're gonna be done. So it's really, really simple, but super effective and a really, really cool animation. If you'd like to get the finished project file that is available right now on my Patreon, along with a ton of other training on the Patreon, every month I'm releasing exclusive tutorials on the Patreon, quite often full collections that are thematic, motion graphics or logos or text or specific processes and maybe shading or geometry nodes, but there's a lot of really cool things on the Patreon that you can check out and learn even more from. If you wanna check it out, that's gonna be linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's get into this tutorial. All right, so to start out, go ahead and grab your logo. If you don't have a logo and you just wanna follow along with this, I would say just take some text and pick a letter that you like, right click and convert it to a mesh and you will be good to go to follow out the rest of this tutorial. Now, if you have a logo, Logo in vector format, what you'll do is go to file, import, and select SVG. I'm going to go ahead and grab my logo in SVG format, and then I'm going to go ahead and scale it up because they import really small, at least mine does. And then I'm going to hit tab just to get that anchor point right there in the middle of my logo. I'm just using G to move it. And then very important, just because it'll kind of throw off your whole system, make sure you hit control A and apply the scale. That's going to make sure the points distribute um, properly so that this thing doesn't look like it's tiny. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and I'm going to open up a new window and we are going to switch over this window up here to the geometry nodes editor and I'm going to click new. So first thing we want to do is hit shift A and get a distribute points on faces node and then we can just bring up that density but specifically instead of random go ahead and use poison disk. What that's going to do is give you this distance minimum. I'm going to bring my density to say, I don't know, one 1000 and then you see this distance minimum that is going to prevent them from intersecting but i really just want it to be the smallest it can be maybe point zero one because these objects are going to be really really small just having the slightest bit of control over their collision will go a long way so we'll take this density and now what i want to do is make it a little bit thicker this direction because that's going to just make it look better so we'll get a set position node we're going to get a combined XYZ node because I just want to move it on the Z. So that's going to allow us to have access to a Z socket. And we're going to get a random value node and plug it right into the Z. And that's going to go ahead and essentially extrude it. So maybe if you don't want it all the way there, you can kind of keep it in the middle. But that's just about as thick as I'd like it to be. And so now I'm looking at my logo here. So what we can do now is set up the noise texture that is going to actually be able to allow us to make all these particles fly out in this really, really interesting way. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this set position node, get a vector math node, and we're going to get a noise texture as our pretty much like our displacement. So make sure that you use the color because if you use factor, it's only going to kind of move them what would look like two axes. It's combining the XYZ into sort of this random diagonal. The color socket gives you multiple colors, which gives you X, Y, and Z movement. So we're gonna click on normalize to keep everything in the middle and plug color into vector. And you're going to get this. Now, right now it's at add. We need to switch this over to multiply. What multiply in this case is going to serve as a strength value. So if you just click and drag, it's going to adjust the strength of the noise texture. And that's what we're going to use to, um, that's this is one of we, this is going to be one of our animated values. Now you'll notice these points look huge. And if you're not ready to start instancing objects in here and adding geometry, what we're going to do is get a set point radius node, and then you can sort of bring them down a little bit to get a better idea of, okay, this is going to be how it's going to look at the end. So maybe we'll bring up that uh, density max to maybe 5,000, and then you can go, go back and play with that noise texture. So what I want to do is switch this noise texture over to 4D because this is also going to be another value that we're going to animate. And I'm going to bring my scale to one and my detail to maybe five. And you'll see we'll get 
a really, really cool movement. And then the more you bring that scale up, the more interesting or really just more different it's going to look. If you like sort of a recognizable pattern, you can bring that, keep that scale around the one, two, or three, or if you want it to be very just all over the place, you can bring it to a larger value and then it kind of looks like a cluster of bugs or whatever coming in. But I tend to like it to look like kind of a discernible pattern uh, to some degree. I really prefer that. All right, now what I wanna do is instance some objects. So what we need to do is get a separate geometry node because I want some of the objects to be spheres and other objects to be this flat, uh, these flat circles. So make sure it stays at the default point. And what we're gonna do is get a instance on points node. And we're gonna get a icosphere here and we'll plug mesh into instance and then we'll bring that radius down. Uh, but there's no actual separation happening right now. It's just instancing icospheres on all of the points. We need to get a random value node that is set to Boolean so that when we throw it into the selection, you can actually separate. And so see how there's missing, there's missing, uh, you know, we're deleting points in a sense. That's because we have an inverted socket. So all the spots where you're seeing objects going away, they are now, those, those spots are being occupied by the other, the inverted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this instance on points, plug inverted into that, and we'll get a join geometry node and plug instances into geometry. And then we're gonna get a mesh circle and plug mesh into instance. And they're gonna be huge. First off, we need to switch this over to ingon and then bring that radius in. I'm gonna give them vertices of six and then bring that in again. And so now we have a random distribution of each. What I want is more uh, spheres than I have essentially these, these they're, they're gonna look like glitter in the render. So we're just gonna keep them at that. Right here in the icosphere, I'm gonna give it a subdivision of one just to keep everything smooth and we'll get a set shade smooth node. And then I'm gonna get another random value node and plug it into the scale of our uh, spheres. Looks like it's randomizing. Yep, okay, so we have the, we'll bring these down, bring these up a little bit. I do want randomness in the scale of our spheres. So something like that. And then we'll get another random value node and we need to plug it into the rotation of the uh, flat spheres. And then we'll just randomize it like that. And that is gonna help when the light hits them, they will uh, reflect really nicely. And then I do want them to be a little bit smaller. I want them to be kind of a subtle glitter. And then now that we're here, I still think the spheres are too big, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the density to 20,000. And then I'm gonna go back to my random value that's controlling the spheres and just bring them smaller, bring a couple bigger. And then I think that's good. That's good for now. We can go ahead and um, add color into the scene. So I'm gonna go here to the material preview and we're gonna get two materials here in geometry notes. We're gonna get a set material node and just duplicate it. So this, see where it says mesh circle, see that line? So this bottom one here, that is gonna represent the metal or the metallic gold material that we're gonna make. And the other one is gonna be that nice red. So let's select this one, make it kind of a interesting red. You can really obviously do any color you want. I'm gonna bring my roughness all the way up and then I'm gonna select it there. And then here on this material, we're gonna make it metallic, pretty rough, and then a gold color and then grab it there. And so now we have all of that. So now we can go into the lighting of this scene. So I'm just gonna bring this, uh, I'm gonna bring this geometry notes window over a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and get a camera. So shift A, get a camera, I hit G and middle click and then just position it. We're gonna right over here in the camera settings, give it 24 millimeters G and middle click again, something like that. And this right here, I'm, I, my immediate thought is, okay, the density needs to be higher on, um, the density needs to be higher on how many objects are in this scene. So what I'm gonna do is right here on the distance minimum, maybe 0 0.005 ought to give us a good amount of density. So that looks really, really nice. So now we can go ahead, I'm gonna bring this window back 
and we can go into lighting. So I'm gonna go here to the cycles view. I am using cycles for this. I'm gonna be denoising my scene and I'm gonna be using 300 on the samples. So here in the world, we'll bring it down to black. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a area light. I'm hit G and we're gonna do a single lighting setup. This is something I do really, really often and honestly is useful in so many cases. So we're gonna use a disc shape, I'm gonna make it nice and big. And then we're gonna go here to the cycles preview and maybe bring my power of like 2000. Here in the world, we'll go here to the volume and add a principled volume node. And then 0 0.01 is gonna give us a nice volume. And then back to the camera settings, we can bring that spread down till we have a little bit of black here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and get a render region. So it looks like 2000 is too bright. Let's go with like 500 for now. So here we go, we have this scene and it looks really nice right now. I'm gonna click on this and go to the red here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hover over it, hit control C, go to the camera, I'm gonna hit control V. And then I'm just gonna bring the saturation down so that we get this uniformity, I think is the right word, a uniformity in the color. So now that we're here, what I wanna do is at certain points in the scene, see how this piece of metal is really bright. It's really bright. It's reflecting, it's directly reflecting that light. And it's going to be very, very bright, but it's hard to communicate how bright that is if we don't have any compositing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render out one frame and add some glare in the compositor. All right, so we have a frame rendered out. I'm gonna go here to the compositing. I'm gonna click use nodes. I'm gonna go ahead and get a viewer node. And then I'm gonna hit shift and uh, right click. And then we're gonna get a glare node, plug it there. And then we're going to go here to, uh, to bloom. And then we're just going to go ahead and on the highlights, I'm going to bring that threshold up just a little bit so that we can just kind of highlight those, those points there. And then we can go back. I'm going to say click maybe, and then you can hit this drop down and click always, and you'll get to see those points. So now I'm going to go and animate this. So bring, we're going to bring our window back. And then in the in your preferences, right here where it says linear, so go to the animation preferences, go here, switch it over to Bezier, and we're going to animate this. So go to your vector math node. I'm going to go ahead and bring it out to something like that. I'm going to hit I, go to frame 200, and then type in zero and hit I again. So this is the animation we have so far. We'll just view it one more time. Now there's another piece of this animation that uh, we can add some movement into it to make it look a little bit more alive and more organic. And that mm -hmm. is going to be this W value, but it's really, really sensitive. So make sure we just do a little bit. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go back to my preferences and switch this back to linear. I'm gonna hit I on the W, go to 200, and I'm just gonna move it a tad bit to like 0 0.03 maybe. And that is just going to randomly move these objects around. Even 0.03 is too much. Maybe 0.01. No, that was needs to be 0.1, not 0.01. 0.1. There we go. There we go. So now they're just moving around at a more reasonable speed. Nice. All right. So now I just want to view the compositing, see these little glare moments. So now we have these little, really nice little highlight moments here in the scene that's just going to make it look a little bit more beautiful. And then maybe even see the random value that's connected to the separate geometry, just bring that back. Maybe a few more pieces of glitter. There we go, that's gonna be awesome, okay. We are done with this animation. So I'm just gonna close the geometry nodes window. We can double check this animation looks proper. That looks really good. So for your render settings, I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames. Actually, no, maybe 230, just so after it, after it animates, it has some time to sit. I'm gonna keep it at 300 samples. 
right here on the printer icon, I'm gonna keep it at a PNG sequence and then just pick your fo folder where you wanna throw all those PNGs. I'm gonna do 1080p. If you just want Blender to export a, a video for you, you don't wanna deal with PNG sequences, you can go ahead to FFmpeg video um, encoding to MP4, and then you'll hit render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have a really, really cool animation. So there you go. That's how you create a really cool logo particle animation. It's really simple. Again, if you want to check out the official project file for this, that is available on my Patreon for tier one, two, and three members. You can check out all the really cool stuff on my Patreon right now. There's some free stuff. You can also join as a free member and you get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.